Hi everybody, my name is Dr. Malvika and welcome back to the IMG Marvels YouTube page. We've had such a great response from you guys and I'm so glad these videos are helping you guys. Today we have a viewer question who asked, should she choose FY1 or FY2 standalone? This video is going to go through the advantages and disadvantages of both FY1 and FY2 standalone and we're going to be comparing and contrasting these two programs in order for you to choose which program you would like to go into. Let's start with what these mean. FY1 foundation program entry means that you'll be entering into the first year of the UK's foundation program. This is the internship year and you will be leaving after you finish the FY2 year as well, which is the um, senior house officer year. While when you enter into FY2 standalone, this means you're entering directly into the senior house officer year and that's the only year you'll be doing. For FY1, it is important that you haven't done an internship because that will make you ineligible. For FY2, you must have done a GMC pattern recognized internship beforehand so that you become eligible for uh, applying into FY2. For FY1, if you're an IMG, you will have to take a gap year. So this means you will be wasting a year because technically you can't have given the PLAB before you pass out of medical school. And if you've done an internship, you can't go into FY1 because that's also technically an internship and you become overqualified. For more details about the eligibility criteria of FY1 and FY2, I'll link the specific videos uh, at the end of this video and also in the description box down below where I discuss them in more detail. So coming on to the advantages and disadvantages of FY1 and FY2. FY1 is open to everybody. So that means it's open to IMGs, it's open to EU citizens, it's open to UK citizens, and it's open to every single person who graduates from a UK medical school. So basically, essentially, it's open to everybody around the world. And so the competition might be quite fierce. In contrast, FY2 is only open to IMGs. They have stopped taking uh, UK graduates who want to uh, change into an FY2 standalone uh, and now FY2 standalone is only open to IMGs. FY1 has many, many more positions. So FY1 is technically, although less people will be applying to FY2, there are also less seats in FY2. These are screenshots from the recruitment stats and facts report that have been released by the Foundation Programme every single year. You can find them on their website. I will link them down below. But basically, as you can see, 6,974 people, which is 94% of all applicants that were eligible for Foundation Year 1, regardless of their nationality, were allocated in the primary list for the August 2020 Foundation Year 1 program. And 425 people were left on the reserve list. And out of the reserve list applicants, everyone who was not allocated and everyone who was still found to be eligible and meeting the criteria were all allocated into the UK by having extra seats made for them in order to get them a job in August 2020. And as we've heard from Dr. Sultan in the interview video of the FY2 series, he had mentioned that there were around 330 posts for Foundation Year 2 available uh, for the 2020 entry and around 500 people who had passed the interviews. So out of the 500, only 330 people were allocated. And this doesn't include the people who did not pass the interviews or did not meet the eligibility criteria. So there must have been around, I'm assuming, 700 people that must have applied to Foundation Year and the acceptance rate compared to Foundation Year 1 is quite low, as you can see. The FY1 entry process will only take into account Foundation Program score. This score is made up of two parts. 50% is made up of your EPM, which includes things like your rank in medical school, um, uh, any publications you have, any extra degrees you have, that makes up 50 points. 
and then the rest of the 50% or 50 points come from your SJT score. And so that's the only thing that's looked at when you're trying to be ranked and getting a place in FY1. FY2 on the other hand is a little different. FY2 is ranked at the interview. 33% of your interview rank is from your CV and 66% is from the interview alone. So those two together make up a score, um, which is your rank. And then you are ranked with all the other IMGs and then given your jobs. I know that this year there were a lot of IMGs who passed the interview, but still were unable to rank because the seats are that limited. So keep that into account when you're going into FY2. FY1 does not have an interview station. So if you're not the best at interviews and if your portfolio isn't very well developed, then maybe FY1 is for you. We've done an entire video on the FY2 interview and CV process. It is going to be linked down below as well. FY1 and FY2 are both training programs. So in both of them, you will be given ample training and you'll have ample supervision and education while working in the NHS. The timeline for FY1 and FY2 is quite different. For FY1, you should be applying right now. The application window is actually open and it's open till September. The application window for FY2 starts in January, end of December, and both of the jobs start in August. So the FY1 process is a year long and the FY2 application process is half a year long. Look at when you're graduating and which one works for you. As I mentioned, you have to pass uh, your medical school before you give the PLAB exam. And there is a deadline to give the PLAB exam for both the FY1 and the FY2. For FY1, you should have given the PLAB exam by November 5th. For FY2, you should have given the PLAB exam and have the results ready by the time the application window opens, which is in the end of December, early January. For FY1, there are other exams that you'll have to give other than just the PLAB exams. For example, you'll have to give the SJT exam. This is a situational judgment test, which is uh, going to determine the 50% of the foundation year program score that I was talking about. And it's an ethical exam. Uh, you will have to fly over to the UK to get that exam, so keep that in mind. And that happens either in December or in January. You will also have to probably sit the CSA exam on top of the PLABS and the SJT if you have taken more than a two-year break out of medical school before applying to FY1. I also made a video talking about how to choose your preferences in FY1. So keeping that in mind, uh, the difference between FY1 and FY2 is that in FY1 you get an unlimited amount of preferences. You can choose to work anywhere in the UK um, that you would like. In FY2, there are a very limited amount of jobs that come out and you have to pick and choose and rank jobs from what they give you. Uh, they include the city and the rotations that are available in that city. They put them all in a list and then that's what you have to choose. While in FY2, you first choose your deanery, you then choose your city and you then choose your rotations that you would like to do from what they've provided. So there's a lot more options in FY1 as to where you want to go and what, where you want to work and what rotations you want to be doing if that's important to you rather than in FY2. For further training purposes, they really like that people uh, have been in the UK NHS program for as long as they could have been and an FY1 might have a slight advantage over FY2 uh, because they can show that they've been in the training uh, in the UK system for longer, but um, since both of them are training jobs, FY1 and FY2 standalone, you can argue that either of them would put you in a good position for applying for specialty training. A gap year is as useful as you make it. You could be doing other things in your gap year, like studying for exams or, um, you know, developing your CV, taking time out for family and other interests, traveling. So it really depends if you don't mind taking a gap year, I would really suggest doing the FY1 for the reasons that are mentioned. But if uh, you think that you wanna do your internship and get it over with and that FY2 is the right option for you, then by all means go for FY2 standalone. It's still a good program. 
and there is still a chance of getting in. It is more competitive, I'm gonna be very honest, but uh, both are doable, just work hard and watch all of our <laughs> videos that we're recommending because uh, we're making them uh, in order to help you succeed in your UK journey. And please, please, please subscribe, like, comment, share this video, share this channel with your friends, like our Facebook page, and you can also message us there if you have any questions. And I will see you guys next time in the next video. If you have any video requests, please leave them in the comments below. And yeah, take care.